As chair, I now call to order the June 12th, 2024 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting, item, voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Wash, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Frimpong? Present. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Ms. Harvey, I see you. Uh, you may be on mute. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear my name called. Miss, this is Robin Harvey, I'm present. Thank you. Dr. Savoy? Ms. Delusky? Present. Thank you. And Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you, Ms. Thank Pitts. You. Please call the roll to determine the, which staff members are present in this meeting. Sure, Dr. Grimm, Dr. Elmendorf, Mr. Dixon. Present. Thank you. Ms. Onijala. Present. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. Present. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Present. Thank you. Ms. Kate. Morton. Okay. And Mr. Jesse Van Doren. All right, Miss Howie. Here. Thank you. And Miss Wash. Uh, she is not able to be here this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, that completes the attendance. Ms. Pumphrey, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Ms. Pitts. The first item on our agenda is B1, Policy 1270, Parent and Family Engagement. At its March 19, 2024 meeting, the board recommitted Policy 1270 to PRC for further discussion to align the policy's vision and goals with the board's vision and goals and to review the policy standards. Um, Ms. Onijala and Ms. Han are here presenting. Um, Ms. Onijala, please proceed if you're ready. Thank you. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Ms. Han, who's going to talk us through um, the, the review and uh, the subsequent changes that have been made um, in response to the board's requests. Ms. Han. Thank you. So I went back and reviewed the board's vision and goals. And I, I still found that the policy aligns with um, in board focus area number four, community engagement and partnership. The board seeks to use all communication vehicles to inform internal and external stakeholders. And the policy advances and advocates for parent, parental and community involvement as expected by the board. Um, and indeed the feedback um, of the policy is analyzed and it's dependent on the community involvement that we get. Um, so at the board meeting, um, I think one of the board members was uh, questioning the goals and then Ms. Hen wanted you to review the other policies in the other counties, which I did again, and they the other policies in other counties align with the research and the ESSA law, so as does ours. Thank you for your work on this, Ms. Hahn. Um, committee members, does anyone have any questions? Uh, 
OK, I don't see any one with any questions. Um, so based on our discussion, how does the committee wish to proceed? We can we have the option of um, returning the uh, policy to the board um, if there are no changes. I don't see any questions or any comments regarding changes. So um, based on our discussion, policy 1270 will be advanced to the board without amendment for second reader. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. May members, Thanks. may Ms. Hahn and Ms. Ananjala be excused. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Next on our agenda is item B2, policy 1280, boundary changes. At its March 19, 2024 meeting, the board recommitted policy 1280 to PRC for further discussion. Mr. Dixit and Ms. Mr. Taylor, um, you may proceed. So good evening. I'll just give you a little bit of background of what we have done before um, on February 5th. Policy Review Committee unanimously approved the amended policy. Then on March 19th, uh, board uh, recommended that 1280 be back to the committee for further discussion. And subsequent to that, uh, members of the public submitted electronic email to the Office of the Board of Education. Uh, those emails have been shared with the board. Uh, and there are no changes uh, that the, the policy contains any changes that have been made. And I'll pass it on to Mr. Taylor to add anything that I may have missed. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. I don't have anything to add. OK. Um, so I have a quick question. Um, so no changes were made based upon the emails that we received and that the committee members were provided with those emails. No additional changes were made made after those emails. That's correct. Um, is that because um, staff thought that the changes and no, no changes were additionally necessary or that those changes were already incorporated in the policy? Well, these the types of changes that were recommended in the email um, fall more on the side of the rule. They're in detail process types of things versus what's stated in the policy. OK, thank you. Um, do any other board members have any questions or comments? This is board member from Plum. Yes, Ms. from Plum. So understanding that those um, suggestions that were submitted via email are more rule based than policy based i guess is there any feedback on whether or not they will or will not be incorporated into the policy i'm sorry the rule so if i may miss frenpong uh, i would direct the committee's attention to other alternatives considered by staff in the analysis page eight starting at line three and uh, I'm sure staff is able to further uh, expound on the statement that they placed in the analysis. Thank you. Yes. We did review the suggestions and we are coming up with language that addresses those that we think make sense into the rule. And then that has to be reviewed ultimately by the superintendent to approve. But we agree that there needs to be a little bit more flexibility in the rule. OK, thank you. And I do see that on that last page where it gives some additional options. So thank you. Any other questions or comments from committee members? OK, based on our discussion, policy 1270 will be advanced to the board without amendment for second reader. Um, Mr. Dixit, I understand that tomorrow is your last day with BCPS, so I just wanted to thank you um, and wish you well. And thank you especially for all your help here on PRC and very specifically with uh, boundary um, study issues, which you know are always difficult for us. So we appreciate you and good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you very much. And members of the committee, may Mr. Dixit and Mr. Taylor be excused. Yes, thank you very much. 
Thank you, colleagues. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Dixit. Okay, next on our agenda is item C1, new business, annual review requirements, policy scheduled for review in 2024-2025, and um, Ms. Howie will present for us. Thank you. And members of the committee, as you know from your agenda, uh, there are students who are scheduled to be on the agenda from Towson High School. Um, I see that there are members of the public who are watching the event, but the link was sent to uh, two students. Not quite sure why they have not logged on, but I would, if they are listening, urge them to look at their email and log on. Uh, through the link that was provided in the email. Uh, and I just would not want uh, the, the board's meeting, committee's meeting to be further delayed. I do apologize for that interruption. Uh, members of the committee, as Ms. Pumphrey indicated, this is uh, the annual uh, presentation from the superintendent to the board consistent with and in compliance with uh, superintendent's rule 8130, which indicates that on an annual basis, uh, the superintendent or the superintendent's designee will present to the board those policies that are to be reviewed in the upcoming school year. Uh, what staff has done in, uh, in this particular case and what we've done in past years is to look at those uh, those policies that are scheduled to be reviewed based on your seven-year schedule under board policy 8130. Uh, but we also have two policies that staff are asking for various reasons to be added. Those are, uh, there are two of those policies, as I indicated, 5550 and 6301. And then there are two policies that are being carried over uh, that were not uh, reviewed this year, for which the review was not completed this year. They were recommitted to PRC, that's 011280. And I would mention that um, board policy 1270, uh, which is reviewed annually, which you just saw with uh, Ms. Han and Ms. Onanjala, uh, even though it's on an annual review and probably will not be um, indicated, uh, will not be reviewed by the board uh, and voted on by the board until the next school year, uh, we thought that it was still necessary to place it on for being reviewed this school year. So in total, there are 22 uh, policies that are being presented uh, for the seven year schedule, as I said, two that staff are asking to be added and two that are being add, carried over uh, for a total of 26 policies this upcoming year. Um, based upon your approval and your action today, this list will be presented as information at the July 9th meeting. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Um, I, based on our uh, board meeting last evening, um, I would like to recommend um, that we add 8501, which is the superintendent evaluation, to this list for review. And it's um, the intention is for a minor change with the um, date that the evaluation is due. Um, we discussed currently the date is July 31st, and we discussed having that extended until September 1st, I believe. Um, in order to have the data provided to us regarding summer school um, and learning over the summer for students. Okay. Um, committee members, any other discussion or questions? Okay, Ms. Howie, do I need to make a motion to add that or... Um, we you can, can ask whether or not there's any objection to adding it. And then okay. if there's no objection, you say without objection, this is added. Okay. Uh, committee members, do we have any objection to adding this policy for review? No objection. This is Ms. Harvey, no objection. Okay, thank you. So policy 8501 will be added for review. So that will be um, added to the schedule that is presented on your uh, at your July 9th meeting. 
Okay, thank you. Surely. Okay, if there are no other corrections or and no objection, um, the policy schedule for review in 2024-2025 will be placed on the July 9, 2024 board meeting agenda as information. Thank you. Um, next Thank on you. our next on our agenda is item D2, appeals and hearings handbook. Um, and again, Ms. Howie will be will be presenting for us. Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, the questions and answers on appeals and hearings is a publication that was actually the brainchild of the policy review committee. Uh, what the policy review committee wanted to do was have an accessible resource, particularly for parents or for individual appellants who are not represented on your hearing examiner process under board policy 8341, as well as your oral argument and hearing process under policy 8340. Uh, what we try to do every year, and I don't know that we are necessarily successful, is to um, make this as non-technical as possible and given that we're a bunch of lawyers, as I said, we don't always succeed in that. Uh, so uh, again, we, we've tried not to make it uh, technical. We've tried to make it uh, something that um, a lay person could understand. One of the things that we do um, each year is to send the handbook to our or your hearing examiners to see whether or not there are issues that arise that they believe should be mentioned in the hearing handbook. So some of the refinements are because of issues that the hearing examiners have uh, identified. One of the things that we also uh, have added is more explanation about student disciplinary appeals under 7305 of the education article. Specifically, the education article permits local boards of education when there is an appeal, that that appeal be heard by a committee of the board. And indeed, uh, several years ago, that is how this board would proceed. Uh, even though the, the uh, statute permits these matters to be heard by hearing examiners, the preference for many years was for a panel of the board to hear these appeals. Uh, the language in the statute says committee, and given that's the language in the statute, we have included that uh, in key places. We've also tried to uh, clarify that individuals do not need attorneys. They can come to these hearings with advocates, be that before a hearing examiner or before the board or before a board committee. Um, I've also done something um, non-technical, which is to make the font larger. I thought that it was difficult to read um, in uh, earlier iterations, particularly as we added more information. So again, visually, hopefully um, that it is not as off-putting given that some of the language could be off-putting. Uh, we've also explained a little bit more about the different sections under which the appeal rights exist. So 4205, 7305, 6202, all are different. And to explain, and hopefully clearly, more clearly, uh, to the public, to those who have filed appeals, exactly what these particular hearings involve, because there are differences between them. When there is a request for appeal that goes to the board and then is sent to uh, the law office for scheduling, one of these handbooks goes out to the requester, to the appellant right away, whether or not they've appealed numerous times or this is the first time. We want to make sure that people have this information and that appellants know what their rights are. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Many members, are there any um, questions or comments regarding the recommended changes to the appeal and hearings handbook? Ms. Frempong? Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Howie. I thought this was really good. I read through it and I, 
I do like the bigger print as well. So <laughs> um, let me get to my questions. OK, so you explained about the committee. That was one of my questions. Um, but that committee then um, is specifically just for the student disciplinary appeals, because that on page two, section that B3. Is correct. OK, that is so correct. Mm -hmm. other categories like if it's a suspended or dismissed of or dismissal of a certi cert certificated personnel, mm -hmm. that's not something coming before this board committee then, right? Correct. It is not. OK. And then um, the next one is on page 10, mm -hmm. where X and it's XB, the section, and XC, it specifically talks about, like, it gives a little bit more clarification what that, um, trying to get to it, what that article is. Let me get so to So page 10, um, about emergency reasons. Page 10, on my PDF, it's page 10, which does that correspond to? It's X, section X, and okay. then, Section C, you when you talk about the section 4205 of the education article, mm -hmm. you also like explain what that article is about. Mm -hmm. And right. then in B, we see the section 6202, but then mm -hmm. we don't get that like additional clarification. Is it because it's too long or? Okay. Uh, no, um, 6202 simply deals with the suspension or dismissal of certificated uh, employees. So that would be teachers, principals, school nurses. Okay. I'm happy to include that in the uh, explanation. But what we found is that the individuals who are most likely to be unrepresented are those who appeal under 4205. So that would be non-certificated employees um, who are appealing either their suspensions or their dismissals. Okay. That would be parents who are seeking a review of magnet admission. Uh, that would be actually suspensions um, of students for fewer than 10 days. That would be bus stop changes, grade changes, uh, special permission transfers, non-residency issues. Those are all 4205 cases. Okay. Okay. Got it. And then just the last thing was, so for page 15 in my PDF, and then mm -hmm. it's the um, 14, section 14, that question mm -hmm. about um, if they can speak to a board member. I'm trying to scroll down. Yeah. Will um, the board member speak to me about my case? Right. Is yes. there, um, so for example, yeah. If we even have a connection or have some awareness, actually, um, of these cases, it's likely that we're not even going to be able to participate. Mm -hmm. So is that something um, just so that the person's aware um, as well? Like if they're thinking, oh, this is a good thing, I'm going to try to speak to a board member about it, but it actually can work against them. Correct. Because you would then uh, be constrained to consider recusal. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you have information that's provided to you ex parte, you know, outside of the hearing process. So it is highly likely that um, it would be um, you would be recusing yourself from uh, sitting as the appellate body in these cases. OK, so I didn't know if that was just if that's. If that information would be also helpful for the actual individual, I understand it pertains more to our behavior as a board member, but just right. so that there's an understanding for that person as well, um, that that is what could happen. Is that because you do explain that they we cannot discuss the case, but mm -hmm. also like what are the consequences or what could happen with what you just said, right? We have to recuse ourselves. Okay. So is it the committee's pleasure that a phrase uh, be added, um, perhaps dropped in a footnote, um, that it is um, likely that you could uh, cause a board member to recuse him or herself uh, from sitting uh, in an appeal if you provide information outside of the hearing process. 
I um, I do agree that that I think that would be helpful to the public because we do often yeah. get questions um, and, you know, that we or, you know, uh, questions for help or assistance. Um, and we know as board members that we um, should be responding. But I think it would be, would be helpful for the public to understand why we may not be responding. OK, and OK, understood. So I will um, I will put that in the draft that goes before the um, the board. In July, and if it's the committee's pleasure, I can certainly send that language out prior to it being sent to uh, the full board or posted in board board docs. That sounds good to me. Any um, we'll any other uh, Ms. Ms. Stolowski. Thank you, and thank you for making all these changes. They really seem you know, positive in terms of communication. Um, just sticking with the theme of like, um, like reaching out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it would make sense and maybe you've already done it, which I thank you if you have just to, when we do have appeals, include some kind of um, one or two questions. Like, is there anything that we could do to make the process easier? Um, and actually it was your changes that gave me the idea for that suggestion. But these changes seem really great, and thank you for doing it. Absolutely. And I had forgotten to mention that these, uh, the handbook is translated into all the languages um, that, or the, I think it's the 10 main languages that are used by uh, our students and their families. Which is also amazing. Thank you. Any other comments? And no objections to those changes, correct? OK, so um, Ms. Howie, it's OK to say that we will um, the handbook will, will be presented with these updates to the board as an information item yes. at the July 9th at the July, excuse me, at the July 9th, 2024 meeting. Thank you. Yes. OK. Next is item D3 policy edit, editing conventions. Again, Ms. Howie. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, and uh, this is. Uh, something about which I do a happy dance <laughs> as a bureaucrat. <laughs> Standardization. So um, once upon a time, since I've been here since the earth cooled, um, policies would be presented in any particular fashion at any particular time. And there was no um, standardization across the system as to how your policies looked. So what the editing conventions do and what we do with them is we send them to staff so that when uh, your policies are presented to you and your policy analyses are presented to you, they all look the same. So this is basically the template uh, for the presentation of your policies and your policy analysis. What I want to highlight for the committee is found under the policy analysis. This is new for this year. Ms. Pumphrey had brought to uh, the committee's attention and to my attention uh, the committee's interest in making sure that equity considerations were presented and part of your discussion as policymakers. What, what happened a few weeks back was that Superintendent's Rule 8130 was amended so that staff would be required to include in the policy analysis when it's being presented to you equity lens considerations. So those considerations will now be a part of all policy analyses going forward so that you will see how staff are applying the equity lens to changes in policy uh, when they're mm -hmm. presented to you. So um, again, I'm a bureaucrat, like things to look the same. <laughs> so this is where the equity lens considerations will be when they're presented to you in the uh, the policy analyses for the 24-25 school year. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Howie. Um, I think this is a very um, important addition, and I think it'll be helpful because although we, um, when we're preparing as individual board members or committee members, um, are you know are 
using um, an equity lens to review the policy. I think it's very helpful to see how staff members have also used that in their review. So I appreciate this change. Um, sure. Any other comments or discussion from other board members? Okay, if there are no corrections and no objection, the editing conventions will be provided to the board as information at the July 9, 2024 meeting. Thank you, members of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Um, the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. Um, I must emphasize that this is no not the time to conduct business as there are, has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. Any comments from board members? I mean, excuse me, committee members. Okay, so next on our agenda is item E, which is electrify BCPS, BCP, excuse me, PCPS proposal. Um, students from Towson um, High School. Ms. Excuse yes. me, Ms. Pumphrey, I did see yes, I uh, Ms. Frempong's hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Frempong. That's okay. I was trying to raise I my hand. Sorry. I was just jumping in. Thank you. Sorry, I missed you. <laughs> I, I just want to say kudos. I mean, I, I really appreciate um, with seeing that with the um, with these policies, how we're having the equity lens. I appreciate how um, Ms. Howie and her staff, they're being responsive to what the committee is saying and just doing things to really, I think, be of help to parents. Um, this BCPS, I think it's a it's a wonderful thing. So again, I just want to say um, kudos to you guys and acknowledge that we really do appreciate your efforts. Thank you. And I agree. Okay, um, I, I agree as well. <laughs> okay, back to our Electrify BCPS proposal. Students from Towson High School approached Ms. Teleski and Board Chair Booker Dwyer about their ideas concerning electric school buses. They have asked to present their proposal and are present today. Um, students, um, kindly proceed. Hello, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm so sorry for all the technical difficulties. I'm actually currently on my phone. I tried to call in earlier um, and we do have slides. To, um, so I was wondering if the IT um, person would be able to present those. As I'm not able to see them, but at least the committee can. I think we have, yes, looks like we have them. Okay, wonderful. All right. So let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Kate Morton. Um, you've probably seen my, my name in the emails. Unfortunately, you can't see my face because I can't connect um, properly. But I'm a recent graduate of Chatham High School, um, and I am one of the leaders of Electrify Baltimore County Public Schools. And Jesse can introduce himself as well. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear All right, you. Wonderful. Um, my name is Jesse. I'm a co-leader along with Kate. Uh, I also just graduated Towson High and uh, you can't see me, but I'm smiling right now. I'm so grateful that we're able to present our proposal to you and we really appreciate um, you guys working with us. Yes, and if we can go to the next slide, you guys um, probably already know that there's a lot of people um, in our initiative today. You're only speaking with two of us, but there are five on our core team and then there's a lot more underclassmen support and support um, from our high school and from BCPS as a whole, as well as teachers and um, students. And going to that third slide, we want to commend BCPS already on you all's role in sustainability commitments um, through policy, through policy 3540, um, that commitment to sustainability through energy efficiency, renewable energy, and lead certification, um, as well as the um, actions that you all have already taken from having two elementary schools have solar panels and the process of um, accrediting those lead certifications to 14 BCPS schools. Um, that's just incredible, the work that you all have already done. Um, and we're just so thankful that we're, we even have the opportunity to speak um, on sustainability with you all today. Next slide, please. And while we're so appreciative for all that BCPS has already done in terms of sustainability, uh, we, of course, think that there's more that could be done, and we think the next big step um, to become more sustainable is electrification. Next slide, please. So electrification is pretty simple. Essentially, it just involves replacing technologies that use fossil fuels uh, with electrically powered equivalents. It can apply to anything from vehicles, including school buses, but also heating and cooling systems, landscape equipment, and even the ovens we use in our school kitchens. 
Next slide, Next please. Slide. <laughs> um, and there's a plethora of benefits, and actually the dossier that we um, linked as well has a lot more benefits, a lot more statistics, and a lot more information than what we have to, to say with you all today. But the main three benefits that are crucial for BCPS, crucial for our future generation and our generations now, are that reduction of emissions, the greenhouse gases, the carbon emissions, healthier schools, healthier air for children to breathe, and lastly, cost efficiency. So we're going to kind of break that down for you all today. Um, next slide, please. In okay, the reduced okay, okay. Before you get too far, I apologize. Can you tell me which slide you were on? I think we got out of order. Uh -oh. um, you uh, should be on slide seven. What's the what's the picture that's on it? Um, it should say reduced emissions and it should be a green slide. We've got it now. We're caught up. Thank you. Apologies. Um, OK, I'll continue. I can't see the slides once again, but I hope that you can see the reduced emissions one. Um, that just talks a little about how though the upfront cost for an electric school bus and electric um, equipment may be more expensive, overall it's incredibly crucial to have a, a better environmental impact through those greenhouse gas emissions of whether it's even um, on a predominantly fossil fuel powered grid, these electric equipment produce way less emissions than over their lifetimes compared to fossil fuel based school buses, um, appliances, et cetera. Next slide, please. And another major benefit of electrification is it creates a healthier environment for students to learn in. So it's just a fact that electric equipment doesn't rely on combustion that emits harmful air pollutants. And so by using electric equipment, uh, we can improve the air quality in and around our schools. And of course, this provides numerous health benefits. And it's also even linked to improved student academic performance. Next slide. And with that in mind, the biggest issue as well is cost efficiency of though an electric appliance or though an electric school bus may be initially more expensive than a diesel one, the cost of ownership over the lifetime of a diesel school bus is way much more expensive than one that's electric. As you can see on the screen, it's about four hundred ten thousand dollars for electric. And it's way much less for or way much more, sorry. Um, for a diesel school bus. And overall, as a district, we can save so much more money, um, like how the Fairfax County Public Schools did um, in maintaining and operating those um, electric school buses compared to those with fossil fuels. And overall, next slide, please. Our resolution, um, it ensures essentially that BCPS gradually shifts away from those fossil fuels um, that degrade our, our generations and degrade the people now with the air quality damages and emissions and that sort of thing. And we request that you transition um, to fully electric buildings and transportation. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so we're just going to break down some of the key components of our resolution. There are five main parts. The first one being um, conducting a district-wide energy use audit just to see where we can be more efficient in terms of our energy use. Um, but of course, this part could be amended um, just based off of what BCPS has already audited. Uh, the second part of the resolution relates to electrifying our transportation. And there are two main actions for this goal. The first one would be to commit that any new purchase of a school bus or other vehicle would be electric. And the second action is that BCPS will actively seek out and apply for grants uh, that would provide us with funds to purchase um, electric vehicles. Um, but we do understand that BCPS has already applied for multiple grants in this regard, and we do really appreciate that and hope the school system continues with that. The third part of our resolution relates to electrifying appliances, and there are three main um, actions to achieve this goal. So the first would be um, for BCPS to create a electrification readiness plan, um, which would just detail how exactly we can go about renovating and replacing certain uh, fossil fuel powered appliances to replace them with electric alternatives, just so we're ready in that regard. Uh, the second action would be to commit that any replacements or new purchase of appliances, including heating and cooling systems or ovens, uh, will be electric. And finally, once again, BCPS will commit to um, actively seeking out and applying to funding opportunities that will give us uh, money to purchase electric appliances. The fourth part of our resolution uh, 
has BCPS commit to replacing our lighting with LED bulbs and also replacing our generators and landscape equipment with battery powered equivalents. And finally, the fifth part of the resolution is more general uh, and it relates to BCPS planning for our trans transition to renewable energy as this is a necessary step to becoming fully sustainable. So bold steps could include uh, discussing with renewable energy providers and trying to sign up for a renewable energy plan, looking into community solar initiatives, and also investigating how we can install solar panels on our school buildings or even parking structures. Next slide, please. So fortunately, there are a lot of grant and funding opportunities at all levels of government. And once again, BCPS has already looked into many of these and we greatly appreciate that. Some funding opportunities to highlight are um, the bipartisan infrastructure law, which gave the EPA $5 billion to subsidize the replacement of diesel school buses with um, electric school buses and other clean vehicles. Um, also on the Maryland level, there's the decarbonizing public schools program, which set aside money for schools looking to lower their carbon footprint. And that of course relates to electrification. Next slide, please. We also wanna highlight that uh, the Maryland state government is already taking bold steps in terms of sustainability and BCPS really needs to keep up. Um, for example, the Climate Solutions Now Act of 2022 sets some pretty ambitious sustainability goals, including a goal for a 60% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions for 2031 and a net zero goal for 2045. So this means two things. One, there's going to be a lot more renewable energy in the state of Maryland, which is great, but we need electrification to take full advantage of that renewable energy. Um, if our school buses are still powered by diesel, if we still are using you know, gas powered appliances in our schools, then they're not going to be able to take advantage of the electricity grid that's powered by renewable energy. So if we have a bunch of new solar and wind projects, um, flowing through our electricity grid, then we need to get all of our vehicles and appliances on that electricity grid to make um, full advantage of the steps in, for sustainability in Maryland. Also, there's going to be less gas consumption in the state of Maryland, which just means that the price of gas is going to increase drastically. And so in order to avoid that price hike, it's best that BCPS electrifies um, all of our vehicles and appliances. Finally, Maryland has already um, initiated some pretty bold legislative actions, including a requirement that all new school bus purchases be electric by 2025. And so uh, in order for BCPS to, to keep up with these policies, it's time that we take electrification seriously. Next slide, please. And so we know already that BCPS, as it's one of the largest school systems in the country and one of the largest school systems in the area, it has a huge impact and influence in sustainability policy and climate policy um, as a leader. And so to be a leader and adopt an electrification resolution similar to this with amendments, with adjustments and, and passing something like this will be huge to be able to create a is an even stronger nationwide and regional leader in school sustainability. Uh, next slide, please. So overall, our campaign is all about electrification, which is just an achievable step towards um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, um, saving uh, money in the long term, and then also protecting the futures of BCPS students. We really appreciate you guys listening to us today, even through our technical difficulties. And we really can't accomplish anything without the support of the Policy Review Committee. So we hope that you guys take a serious look at our resolution. You provide amendments where needed and uh, eventually pass our resolution. And we're of course open to questions. Okay, Kate and Jesse, thank you so much for your presentation and um, you both and your team for preparing for this. Um, I appreciate the detailed and informative information that you provided to us. Um, your passion for this initiative is obvious and, you know, for protect for protecting our environment as well. Um, and I also applaud your perseverance and continuing to reach out to the board to make sure that your student voices are heard. Um, committee members, any other any questions or comments for our students? Ms. Selesky. 
Um, hi there. Yes, I want to echo everything that Ms. Pumphrey said. Um, you know, some of you may know that I did have several Zoom meetings with this group, and um, all of you came so passionate, so well prepared, um, so articulate, and um, you know, your your dedication to this cause does not go unnoticed at all. I know that you all. I'm not sure if all of you are graduating, but I know that at least some of you have just graduated. Um, and of course, congratulations. And, um, you know, we all wish you the best of luck. Um, my two thoughts, because um, the, the progress that we make with this may take some time, but we would love to be able to keep you updated. So um, my one request would be if it's possible to have the slides sent to us that way um we have like a written record of some of this information that you just shared that would be amazing and then so, number two you know if you would allow us to buy the emails that you gave on the slides and if they're bcps emails then we should most definitely get an updated email just to keep your your group updated as we continue to make progress with these endeavors um thank you all very much Thank you, Ms. Selesky, just so you know, the uh, the slide deck is posted in board docs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Any other comments or questions from board um, committee members? OK, again, thank you, Kate and Jesse. Um, we appreciate your hard work and we will take this matter under advisement. Thank, thank you, you so much. Okay, um, next item F is announcements and adjournment. Um, before we continue, I just wanted to thank Ms. Howie and Ms. Pitts and Ms. Wash, who I know isn't present, um, for all your work with us this year on the on the committee, for keeping me straight especially, and for, um, you know, um, agendas that keep us on track with reviewing the policies necessary for the um, school year. And timing is always fantastic, and we appreciate you. Um, the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for September 16th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. And because there is no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank Take you. Care. Good night. Thank you.